Uh, uh, uh. Don't turn that dial. This is the right station if you want to hear about Jonathan Thomas and his Christmas on the moon. It was a cold winter's night. I shall never forget. Santa Claus came in, and his feet were quite wet. He sat down by the fire and said, I'll get warm. Never before have I seen such a storm. Just then, at the door, there came a loud knock. When I opened it up, I got such a shock. The wicked squibobliums came out of the night and kidnapped Santa Claus. But they had a good fight. They said, we will see there's no toys this year. We hate all this nonsense about Christmas cheer. Well, Jonathan Thomas and the man in the moon have promised they'll find him and bring him back soon. Oh, Jonathan Thomas is just a wee lad. He's doing his best. And what trouble he's had. But with the man in the moon and Gorgonzola the horse, there isn't a doubt that they'll find him, of course. They're now on the way to Squibobblium land. It's a dangerous road. And I understand there's dwarfs and goblins and all such things and nightmare forests and fairy rings. But the worst of it is, there's a wicked old witch who rules our land called Rumpelstitch. She brews bad magic. But although she may scheme, she's dreadfully afraid of the fairy queen. For the good fairy queen knows a charm or two. Whenever there's trouble, she knows what to do. And not long ago, the travelers three met the little elf king, who gave them a key. Now, what do you think? It opened the door into looking glass land, and what is more, they met Alice, the queen, who asked them to dine. She'd said they'd find Santa in plenty of time, for she said, I will help. Then to Jonathan Thomas she gave a whistle, and with it a promise, if he blew it once, right before their eyes, he'd grow to be of enormous size. If he blew it twice, while yet he was tall, then right away he'd grow quite small. And sure enough, when he tried it out, she was right about it. There wasn't a doubt. So they thanked her kindly and hurried on to Squibobblium land for the way as long. But the wicked old witch, she said with glee, by the side of the road I'll be a tree. And the moment they pass within my shade, they'll forget who and where they are, I'm afraid. But now, if you're ready, suppose we see what happened next to the Travelers Three. Hold your horses there now, stranger, because you're walking into danger. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Listen. For goodness gracious sakes to goodness. Who said that? That's what I'd like to know. Who said that? Yes, that's what I'd like to know. Who said that? If you'd look to see, you'd see it was me. I'm standing very near. Well, sakes alive, please look alive. This is me, right here. Oh, look, Mr. Man in the Moon. It's a little man with a beard. Well, of all the insults I've ever heard, just never mind my long white beard. I guess I should have saved my breath and let you go right to your death. <laughs> well, Jiminy Crickets, who are you? Yes, who are you? Well, dead bonnet, I'm Kermit. The hermit. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Hermit the Kermit? No, not Hermit the Kermit, but Kermit the Hermit. Why don't she get it right? Oh, I'm very sorry, if you please, sir. I didn't mean to get it wrong. What did you say about saving us from our death, Mr. Hermit? I've lived in these here woods for a mighty good long time. And I know every tree as well as well can be. And by cracky, they know me. Well? Well, sir, yesterday there was a brand new tree that wasn't there before. And land of Goshen, it's just my notion that I'd better find out some more. Find out what, if you please, sir? Well, sir, as I said, I know every tree. But that there tree didn't look right to me. So I started to watch, kind of, spying and such. And what I saw gave me a stitch. That there tree moved around without making a sound. I'm telling you, that there tree is a witch. Did, did you say a witch? Yep, that's what I said. And if it weren't for me, you'd all be dead. Gracious sake to goodness. If in the shade of that third tree you laid, well, sir, 
I guess in the shade of that thar tree you'd have stayed. On account of that thar shade is a spell which I can tell very well which that thar wicked old witch is made. Well, we're very grateful to you, Mr. Hermit the Kermit. Dad, burn it. It isn't Hermit the Kermit. It is Kermit the Hermit. Dad, burn it. Oh. Oh, for goodness sakes to goodness. We are sorrier than sorry. I humbly apollo... 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 For gracious sakes, the flub dudge. I'm sorry. You're very nice, Hermit, if you please, sir, because you told us about that tree. I'll tell you a secret, if and you'll swear to keep it, and it might do ye a bit of good. If you use it in time with the line of rhyme, you'll see if that thar tree is made out in wood. What is the secret, if you please? If and you'll listen real well, I'll start in to tell. A very good way to break up the spell. Uh-huh. If when a tree is really a tree, it's very easy to see. And I know some magic that'll make things a mite tragic. If when a tree isn't a tree. So here's what you do when I tell it to you. Just say the lines and make sure it rhymes. And then just watch and see what happens to that there old tree. What is a rhyme, if you please, Mr. Hermit? One, two, three. You're not a tree, but a wicked old witch who's as bad as bad can be. What happens to the tree then, if you please? Well, sir, don't ask me. Just watch and see. Because what is to be, well, is to be. Now go right ahead and speak the rhyme that I said. But be sure you don't get in the shade. And I reckon when you're done, the tree will start to run. And the witch will be a mite sorry for the game she's played. Yes, sir, Mr. Hermit. I'll say the rhyme right this minute. Yep. Well, speak right up, Jonathan Thomas. And say it good and loud. Yes, sir, Mr. Man in the Moon. As loud as ever I can. Here I go. One, two, three. You're not a tree, but a wicked old witch who's as bad as can be. Gee, Willikus. For gracious sakes to goodness, look what's happening to the tree. It's changing into the witch. Hey, hey, what did I say? Curses on you for your tricks. You put me in a terrible fix. You'd better hurry up and go away from here. Or we'll throw a lion growl at you. Yes, we'll throw another growl at you. That's what... Oh, yes, I'll go. But I'll come back, and that's a fact. That I yet find a way to keep my promise. You wait and see, Master Jonathan Thomas. <laughs> Who flim floods for gracious sakes? Someday that old witch is going to make me so mad, she'll wish she hadn't. She ought to mind her own porridge and leave us alone, hadn't she, Mr. Man in the Moon? I should say so. But now it's time to go. But before we go, we want to say to you, Mr. Hermit the Kermit. Dad Burnett, the name is Kermit the Hermit. Not Hermit the Kermit, Dad Burnett. Oh, oh yes, to be sure, but... Uh, what I wanted to do was to say that uh, we are very grateful to you. Yes, we're very grateful to you, Mr. Hermit. Well, sir, I do declare that's very fair. Yes, sir. And if we can ever help you, just let us know. And now, come on, Jonathan Thomas. We've got to go. Goodbye, Mr. Hermit. Goodbye, Mr. Hermit. Yes, sirree. Goodbye. <laughs> Gracious to goodness. Oh, look, Mr. Man in the Moon. He disappeared in a great big puff of smoke. My sakes, I wonder what it takes to do such magic as that. It's probably vanishing cream. That's what it is, vanishing cream. Well, come on, Jonathan Thomas. It's growing late and we'll have to hurry. It's getting dark, too. Oh, what was that just ahead of us? Gee, Willikers, 
It's the pea soup fog, Jonathan Thomas. The pea soup fog? I never heard of that. Yep. It's one mile wide and three miles high. And we'll have to go through it to reach the land of Squee Bubble. And I don't like pea soup. I like onion soup much better. You'll have to learn to like it, Jonathan Thomas, because here we go. Ooh, it's as dark as two times two and... Uh, oh, 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 look, Mr. Man in the Moon. What, what's that? Uh, gee willikers, I don't know. We'd better ask and find out. Who are you? I'm the dragon of the 13 tails, and I feed with greed on little boys, puppy dogs, and big, fat snails. Ooh. Come on, Jonathan Thomas, we'd better run. Oh, what a silly thing to do, but I can run faster than you, and I'll have such fun eating you up one. By one, ready or not, here I come. Oh, my goodness to gracious. Out of the frying pan into the fire. Poor Jonathan Thomas and the man in the moon are having such a dreadful time trying to rescue poor old Santa Claus. And wouldn't it be dreadful if they got gobbled up by the dragon when they're almost to the land of Squeebobble. But whether they did or not, I don't know. We'll just have to wait until the next story of Jonathan Thomas to find out. So don't forget to listen, will you? I won't. <laughs> <laughs> 